this week. Uh, we are going to actually go through two chapters. Uh, chapter 13 is pretty short and chapter nine deals with functions and you've already had some exposure to SQL functions when we did the aggregate functions. So this is just going to expand on what you know about functions and introduce you to something new called views. So you are going to be uh, reading through the chapters in the book, and then when you finish, uh, you can go into the lecture demo. And the lecture demo just summarizes all of the different string functions. And uh, you should be able to run a lot of these kind of as is in uh, SSMS. So let me pull this over. Get rid of what I've got in here right now. I'll pull this right over here. Yes, I think it is most useful if you guys kind of run these while you are reading through, right? So string functions, uh, there's a bunch of them and they manipulate our text strings. This select, you can actually run as is. So I'm just going to gonna copy and paste it right over here. Okay, and then you execute it. Oh, can't have it highlighted though. It's very fussy about those things. Okay, and then for this next one, um, and you can see that that actually counted the number of characters in the string. Uh, for the next one, it actually is going to get rid of all of the extra white space that is to the left of the string. And so we got all this space in here, and when I execute it, okay, you can see that it is now gone. Okay, so right trim kind of does the same thing, but it gets rid of uh, all of the space on the right. And then what this one will do is it looks at the string and it returns the specified number of characters. So a lot of these I kind of designed so that you guys can copy and paste. Whoops, wrong one. Okay, and just in case you don't know, the shortcut for pasting is control and the letter V. But you can see it did pull in the first three characters, which is what I told it to do. So I think a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, this one uh, counts over a specified number of characters and then returns the specified uh, number. So it count in eight. which brings it to the C in chocolate, and then it returns nine characters. So as you can see, this is these are pretty self-explanatory. Replace, uh, this is the string. This is what it's looking for. This is what it's going to replace it with. And all of these you can run. Uh, reverse is kind of fun <laughs> because it basically uh, does the reverse of the string. So uh, this first one is tricky because the reverse is same as the forward, but this one is not. And I believe that's called a pal palindrome when you have the reverse of the word is the same as the forward. Uh, let's see, it still has the old one in the clipboard. So let me try to get this new one in. Yeah, so that's the reverse. <laughs> you could develop your own little language here. Uh, so I think you guys can kind of read through and figure out what all of those do. There are links to interactive exercises that you can do as well. In addition to the string functions, we have uh, numeric functions. 
Some of the more useful ones might be round, so you can round some of the numbers. And then we have some number testing functions uh, to see if it's numeric. Uh, ceiling and floor are rounding functions, and they are in many, many languages. Ceiling rounds down and no, ceiling rounds up because the ceiling is above you. Floor rounds down. This is how I remember it because the floor is below you. So uh, it's like that in all languages. Okay, but it is kind of helpful to run these so you can actually see what it does. Uh, the RAND function. So SQL does have a RAND function, just like every other language. <laughs> uh, it returns a number between 0 and 1, uh, which is going to be probably not a random number you're going to want to do much with. Um, the random number that it returns is not truly random. Uh, you actually need a seed value for that. And to get the seed value, we use checksum and new ID. That will seed the random number function, and then you get a truly random number. And if you don't want decimal numbers, you can actually multiply by 100 and that will give you a number between zero and 100. Okay, and so, I mean, if you want to, to run those, you can. Uh, if you only want a whole number, you actually have to cast it as an integer and then uh, you won't get the decimal portion. The date and time functions are actually kind of useful, especially if you have a column that you want to fill with the current date, uh, because then you can just set it uh, equal to get date, and it's always going to fill it with the current date. Okay, so you can kind of take a look at this. I think get date is probably the most useful one, but um, you know you can return the day of the month as an integer the month as an integer, the four digit year, all sorts of different ways to uh, display the dates. Other functions. So just like regular programming languages, um, we have other functions that make SQL operate a little bit more like a programming language. So the case is one of these. Uh, you use the keyword case, and then it looks at an input expression. And then you say when the when it's expression one, then you know, tell it what to do. Uh, when expression two, then tell it what to do. So probably um, an example here makes more sense. So if we're going to select order ID and quantity, um, we can use the case, and you'll notice it begins with case, ends with the word end, and then we have the when clauses, which are kind of like if, okay? So we've got when quantity is greater than 30, then it'll display in the cell the quantity is greater than 30. When quantity equals 30, it's going to display in the cell the quantity is 30, and if it's anything else, it's displaying a different message. Okay, and here's this interactive link, so you can kind of try that out. Uh, for this one, uh, you can actually use it to remove nulls. So you can have uh, your column selected, uh, specify your table, you know, order by. And then you can say case when city is null, then country, otherwise city. Okay, and that will affect how it's being sorted. Uh, they do have an if function, it's I if, uh, but the way that it works is kind of like uh, the shortcut for if else. Um, so we've got I if 
And then we've got what we're going to check our condition. Uh, and then a comma, we tell it what to do if it's uh, true. And then we tell it what to do if it's false. And you can have, you know, numbers display, you can have text display, you know, whatever it is that you want. Uh, let's see, choose. Choose looks at an index value that you provide, and then it returns a uh, item from the list that matches the index value. Okay, um, and the index value has to be an integer or a data type that can be converted to an integer, and it must range from one to the number of values. So most of the time when we're indexing, we uh, we can use a zero, but in this case, it starts at one. So that is a weird little detail that you guys are gonna have to remember. Okay, but here uh, I've got choose month of the higher date. And then I'm actually, I've got the seasons in here. So this would be for January, February, March, April, May, um, kind of, goes with seasons. And let's see, coalesce is going to return the first expression in a list of expressions that isn't null. Um, the key here is that all the expressions in the list have to have the same data type. And then if everything was null, it would return a null. So here we've got name, class, color, and product number. And then we have some columns that could be null. So we've got class that it needs to check first, color, and product number. The first one of those that is not null is what it displays. Okay, if by chance all of them are null, then it's just gonna return null. is null. This is a function unique to SQL Server. It allows you to replace null values with a replacement value. Okay, so here we're looking at AdventureWorks and we're trying to calculate an average and we're just saying that if the weight is null, then replace it with 50. Because uh, otherwise, null would have a value of zero and it would throw off our average. Grouping. Uh, grouping looks at your result set. And if you've got some kind of uh, aggregated function, you know, like the sum max, min, uh, returns a one or a zero if it is not aggregated. So you can use it with a select list or having or order by or group by. Uh, and so here we've got it in a case and we're saying when grouping vendor state equals one, then display all. So one means it has aggregated the column, which means it is displaying a total. And when it does that, we get nulls here. So this is kind of a nifty little way to replace null with different text. So if we run this, instead of the word null, we're gonna see the word all. So this is the original version with rollup, which is why you're kind of getting those little subtotals. And then here's the version where we're using grouping. And we're saying if the vendor state is a one, that means that you are on a total line. Okay, The vendor city is a one, then you are on a total line. Okay, And we, instead of 
having the word null display. I mean, we could tell it to display total or we're telling it to display all. So you can see here, these are places where null would have displayed and now we have text instead. Um, ranking functions, I will kind of let you read through these. These are not used very often. Um, basically, it lets you return uh, the rank, but they they do this in a different sort of way. So uh, there's variations. There's four different ways to do this. So you can kind of read through. But a lot of these are more advanced functions that we are not going to be using. It's nice to be aware that they're there, but they're not ones I'm going to have you use. Uh, once you get done with the lecture demo, you are going to go in and do the textbook assignment. And you will see that I do have videos for all of the tasks in here. And then you have directions. And we're going to be practicing uh, all of the different uh, functions that we have looked at in the chapter and the lecture demo. Okay, this one is using the RAN function, so you'll actually see a, a, a way you can use that that is kind of useful. Uh, it randomly selects investors. Here we're using the round. You'll get a little practice with some date functions. Get to use case. And there is a little script that you guys are going to end up having to run. Uh, because when we get down here to the coalesce and is null, you have to have tables that have a lot of nulls in them. And so this little script that you you can actually copy it, paste it right into SSMS and run it. But you can see that we're adding a table to examples to the example database that's called wages. And if you look, our wages table has a lot of nulls in it. Okay, and this is going to let us practice uh, some of those null functions. So it'll enable us to practice coalesce and also is null. Uh, then we've got the lab assignment where now you've seen uh, a lot of different ways to use all of these functions, you're going to create your own. So uh, for the string functions, you need two queries that use string function. You can use any table or columns to accomplish the task. So my advice to you guys is keep this super simple. It does not have to be anything that's complicated. Okay, in fact, um, you know, you can check a value and just display some text, you know, in a cell if you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything that is super complex. Okay, so if I took a look at this, all I'd really want to do is find a database with a couple of text columns. And you can literally use any of the databases including your term project for this. So what I would probably do for one of them is concatenate first name and last name. That's that's kind of a nice, easy one to do. And maybe I would do another one where I did uh, maybe something with the phone. Let me look and see what that looks like. Oops, we got to, where's the table? I want to see what's in that phone column. I mean, you could kind of go in there and just grab everything, you know, from character five on. I mean, and skip the, you know, area code or something like that. So I wouldn't do anything super tricky. 
I would kind of keep these kind of basic. Uh, for the number of functions, you need a query that uses RAND, and then you need one additional query that uses a numeric function. And, you know, so it could be round or it could be seal or it could be floor. Okay, so you're going to go through and create the functions. If you need to, you know, look back at the textbook assignment, look back at the lecture demo, lots and lots of examples for you to look at. Chapter 13 is much shorter. Uh, and views are actually fairly easy to make. All a view is, is it is a, is a select query that you have saved and you've given it a name and that allows you to reuse it. That is all a view is. Okay, and so the syntax, you can see here's the select query, right? And the syntax is create view. Okay, and then there are a couple little options and attributes you can add, but the whole gist of it is you're just making your select query permanent. You're making it a database object that you can rerun. Database administrators create views to control what users have access to. Okay, so they can totally control what different employees can see by creating views. Okay, so you'll kind of go through here. Um, one option that is kind of uh, important is encryption. So without encryption, you can literally see the code that was used to create the view. And in your database files that we got the, the commercial ones, right? Worldwide Importers and Northwind. There are views in here, lots and lots of views. And if you right click on these, uh, we can actually take a look at the code that was used to create the view. So if we script the view as, and we do create here, put it in a new query window. This is the view. This is the code that was used to create the view. And that actually looks fairly complex. They're not all that complicated. Okay, this is a little bit shorter. Okay, but the reason we can do that is because they did not do their view. When they created their view, they did not say with encryption. That is why we are able to see all of that code. You want to be a little careful with schema binding. Um, if, you, if you create a view with schema binding, then it's not going to let you delete the table that the view is based on. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, you can retrieve the data from a view, kind of the same way you'd retrieve it from a table. You, you Instead of saying from and then the table name, you say from and then the name of the view. Okay, so you can read through this. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, as far as updating data in views, um, as long as the view was created based on a single table, then it's totally, you can use it to update data. Okay? It's when you get into more complicated selects that updating the data may not be an option. Okay, so uh, these are the requirements for creating views that allow updating the data in your tables. Now, once you finish you know, reading the chapter, going through the lecture demo, you're gonna do the textbook assignment. Uh, there are videos here, and you're gonna be basically creating several different views. 
Okay, you'll do an updatable view. You're going to do a limited update view. Okay, so you'll get uh, practice creating these different types of views. You're also going to uh, create a view and then you're going to have to update it. So how do you do that? Um, so this basically tells you everything you need to know about creating and managing views. Then for the assignment, you are going to do a final project milestone three lab assignment. So if you remember the in when we did our aggregate queries, we said milestone three is broken into three parts. Part one was the aggregates. Part two is creating the views. Okay, so you are going to create your own views with your database file. You're going to do four of them. Only one of them has to be updatable, meaning that you can use the view to update the table. And honestly, if the easiest way to create a view that can update a table is just to do a select, I would select all of the columns in one table and save it as a view. And then that is an updatable view. Okay, that's all you have to do. Um, once you create the views, you're gonna use the updatable view to modify data in a column. Okay, and that is the whole assignment. I did include quite a few resources for you uh, in case you do get confused. Uh, these resources should help you, but I think this week is pretty straightforward. Um, if you do run into problems or have questions, please let me know and have an awesome week.